Hello! Hello, everybody. Hi, it's Father Jeremy St. Martin, and I am here with Father Martin. Can you say your name for us, Father Martin? Uh, my name is Father Martin Kun Sang Nair. And where are you from, Father Martin? I'm from uh, Ghana in West Africa. And how long have you been a priest? I am 18 years old tomorrow as a priest. Tomorrow is my 18th anniversary. Wow. Now, you were sent here to America by your bishop through the Pontifical Society of the Propagation of the Faith. Is that right? Yes, that's oh. right. And you were sent to uh, raise money for your diocese. Yes. Can you tell us where you went? I first uh, got to St. Peter's Parish, Plymouth. So I stayed there, and they have a collaborative parish. So you have St. Peter's, you have St. Catherine, then you have Our Lady of Lourdes. So for the three weekends, I did the appeals there. From there, I moved to St. Mary's in Dedham. And from Dedham, well, I visited uh, a Ghanaian priest at Sacred Heart in Rosendale. From there, I flew out to Syracuse, New York to do one of the appeals the weekends of 3rd, 4th August. And then on the 5th of August, I came into uh, this area, uh, St. Joseph's, uh, St. John's, and St. James. Yes. And I've been here, really happy also to help out for the few weeks that I have before I go back to Ghana. <clears throat> So you're not assigned here, but you met in one of your parishes, our seminarian, yes. uh, seminarian Colin yes. McNabb. Yes. And you were you had some more time in America, so you said you would come here to help out, and yes. we're very happy to have some some help. Yeah. And uh, it's been great to just hang out with you, Father. Okay. Uh, Thank you, also. We're both Roman Catholic priests. Yes. And we're <laughs> both diocesan um, priests, which yeah. means the regular kind of priest. We're not special ops priests like order priests and we're both uh, we've been ordained around the same time around the same time yeah and he's his last name is father martin yes his and i'm father saint martin yeah just saying so it's good i'm going to be a saint also so <laughs> he's saint martin i'm going to be saint martin also uh, i it would cost a lot of extra money to have the saint added there oh then that would be difficult yeah yes. <laughs> but um so one thing that's for sure is uh, seminarian Colin McNabb yes. was sent by the seminary to Ghana yes. and he knows Ghana yes. and Ghana really is a place where you, in your parish you have what did you say how many um, parishioners and how many catechumens uh, we have about 3,000 baptized Catholics on the register and over that number of catechumens it means that they are still ready, they are coming, they are on the way to be baptized. Yes, of course, we have some permanent catechumens also. And these are people, Muslim men, who are in a polygamous state. They have two, three, or four wives. But they love the faith and they are so dedicated. But just that, well, uh, we cannot go ahead to baptize them as it is now. Right. So that is the situation we have. Isn't that it's amazing? So to put that into perspective, in a yeah. parish around here in this area of the yes, world, yes. we'd be happy if we had ten catechumens in a year. <laughs> um, sometimes you have three. Sometimes yes. a parish will have none. Wow! They, you have three thousand over three thousand yes. catechumens. That's yes. three thousand people yes. preparing, waiting to get baptized. Yes. Um, so that's just really gives you a sense of things. Right. We have um, now. One of the things that I'm interested in doing, I, mm. I was just thinking here in Our Lady of Greece Parish, uh, St. Joseph's Church, yes. Yes. it wasn't maybe 60 years ago before we had, mm. we had a little church, yep. but we needed a bigger church. Mm -hmm. So the parking lot to the right of the rectory, as you yep. look at it, was, yes. was where the church was, but mm. we, you know, put our money together to build a bigger church. And um, it's a nice church with nice stained glass windows and okay. and a marble. Yeah. In the in the I sanctuary. I love that church. Yes. It's a substantial monumental church that served yes. for a long time. Yes. And um, you showed me your church in Uganda. It's Ghana. Yes. I mean, oh, I keep saying that. Forgive me. <laughs> Ghana. Yes. And uh, you know, it's it's like the good beginning. Yes. 
I know you need roads, you need water, you yeah. need education. Education, chapels. Um, right. Yeah. And still a lot of people who need to be, um, just learn to read. To read, yes. Um, so there's so much good we can do. I mean, some people say, Father, you're always asking for money. But then I see people like buy like a really nice, uh, I don't know, I'm going to say something that no one buys so no one feels bad. Mm -hmm. um, a really nice golden trumpet. Um, I, no one actually buys a golden trumpet, but <laughs> if I say something else, someone's yes. going to feel guilty. Okay. <clears throat> but you know what I mean. Yes. There's nothing wrong with buying a really nice motorcycle, but sometimes you think, well, you already got five and you want to buy the sixth one, but you could also, like, with that much money, yeah. build a, like, get a new well, mm -hmm. open a school, and build a church yeah. in Ghana. Yeah. So I think we, we're doing good. We should live a life of... Christian poverty, a, a life of detachment, a life of simplicity as Saint, I mean Saint, as Pope Francis encourages us. Yeah. And we've been working together for a while, and this isn't a man who's coming from Africa who was sent on his own to get money, and we don't, we can't trust him. He was sent by his bishop to, uh, to do these fundraisers. And so I would say, you know, some people spend a lot of money, say, giving... Um, money to organizations that help and dogs who have been uh, abused and that's great but here's something greater even greater we have a, a greater product to sell if you're looking to do some good charity work and um, and obviously this is from the ground up it's not also you know pointing us to eternal life it's first and foremost saving the world and all the good things that come from from that um, do come yeah. you know we know we can't have heaven on earth but when we try our best we come we become the people who create the closest thing to heaven on earth so anyways I'm talking yeah. too much <laughs> I want to know more about your career so you after you went to the seminary then your first assignment was what I was assigned as a curate in a parish Okay. In a rural parish, yes. So like a parochial vicar, we'd parochial say, vicar, yes. a helper priest, <clears throat> and then exactly. after, after you worked in a rural parish? So I was there for a year, and then I was appointed the diocesan vocations director, diocesan uh, youth chaplain, uh -huh. and diocesan director of the Pontifical Mission Society. So those were the three I handled uh, in the diocese for some time. Then I was later appointed the financial administrator of the Catholic Diocese of Damango. And from there, then I had a chance to come to the U.S. here to uh, study. I lived out in St. Catherine of Siena Church in Ithaca, upstate New York. And then I did pastoral work there and also enrolled into Cornell University. Then I studied international development, an MPS program for two years. MPS? A master's in professional studies. That's what it means, Ma MPS. Master's in professional, in professional studies. studies. Yes. Then thereafter, I went back to Ghana to help uh, in the work of the church. And invariably, every year, uh, the bishop sends some of us to come to do, uh, make the mission appeals, the propagation of faith, because that is what supports us in our various fields. We have many needs and shows. Once the church is uh, universal, we rely on the support of our brothers and sisters who are here in other places in Europe and whatnot to support us so that we can uh, reach out to the poorest of the poor in the world. And so that is why uh, I'm here again this year in the Boston area and I'm here right now uh, in Pepperell and Townsend to try to uh, also support in the work before I go back, fly back to Ghana on September 12th. Well. We also have had great times where he's been able to meet with some of the youth, yeah. some of the little youth group activities, and we tried to learn a little bit of the yeah. language. Mm. We uh, we tried to do our father yesterday. Yes. And it's the language. There's lots of uh, <laughs> sounds they have in his language. We don't have in our language. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we so, have we yeah. have had fun. Yeah. Yeah. So I like to maybe uh, also go a little uh, further. To explain the areas we're working on for now, our major uh, area has been providing water for communities that do not have water. Some communities are struggling. They do not have portable drinking water. And we have 
a number of these in the diocese. In my own parish where I'm a pastor, there is one of this community, uh, Kantekura, which is close to the border of uh, Ivory Coast. They do not have a single well, not a single uh, well for them to drink. And I went there to celebrate Mass. I really pitied them a lot. Now, the... You what them a lot? Come again. You said you, you really... I pitied the situation. Oh, pitied them. Pitied the situation, yes. Oh. So I was there and I learned that the women who walk about three miles to the river to fetch water, they carry on their heads. You're talking about 20 pounds of weight. They carry that, so they go back and forth to the house and the river. So those women who are strong are able to do this only twice in a day. Some others cannot do that. Then the funniest thing was also that I learned that because of the shortage of water, some men would only take their bath once in three days. Can you imagine that? One in three days. The animals are struggling to get water to drink. Now, in some of these communities, the only river that runs through the village is the source of water for them, and that is where everything is done. That is where they go down to fetch, to drink. That is where they go to do the laundry, because in this <clears throat> area, we do not have laundry machines. Uh, even the presbytery where we are three, we live together. We don't have a laundry machine. And I'm not too sure whether the bishop himself has a laundry machine. But the women go down to the river to wash. That is where the little ones will jump in to swim because we do not have uh, uh, swimming pools. And sometimes it's from these sources that they fetch. And that is why sometimes you read about waterborne diseases in some parts of Africa. It's basically because of this. So this particular village, I was so touched and I really thought I could help. I'm working hard to see if I can uh, you know, get them a well. Now, in Ghana, we have drilling machines, and a drilling machine can get a well and put a hand pop on it. We estimate it would be about 3,000 US dollars. Between 3,000 and 3,005, you can comfortably get a well with a hand pop for a community. And indeed, if a community will have a thing like this, they'll be so excited that they will dance throughout the night in praise of God. <laughs> And definitely, they would always be praying for the donor or group of donors also. Our second major problem is also uh, about education. When the diocese was started uh, 24 years ago, the bishop realized that the illiteracy rate was so high in the area. It was 96% among women and 84% among men. So he said, we got to do something. And lo and behold, through the support of his uh, friends from uh, you know, Münster in Germany, he studied in, in Germany. So his friends helped and we built a high school, a girls senior high school, known as the St. Anne's Girls Senior High School. Now, many of the girls get in there and they get uh, the education. But because it's a private school, the government well will not support it with feeding. Most high, I mean, all, mo almost all high schools in Ghana are boarding. They are not like in the U.S. here. So the feeding cost is there, tuition is there, electrical bills, you know, health and all that. We estimate that an amount of 1,200 U.S. dollars can cater for a girl's fees for a whole year, an entire year. And that will support some of these girls who are from really poor families and cannot pay the fees. Also, some from, I mean, some who are orphans and they really have nobody to support them. And I'm happy to say that over the years we have made this known and uh, some families have really supported. We have the Browns family in Ethica in particular, that is Thomas Brown's family. They supported a girl and now that girl is a professional teacher what a joy that Gloria will have for the Browns uh, family. So that is another area that we're looking for help, either in part or in full, to support these girls. It is even possible that if somebody wants to support a girl, we can link you up to the girl so that you can also communicate and get to know more about the education. Other needs would include, you know, getting chapels for uh, small communities, uh, outstations where we go to worship. Some of these outstations sit under trees for services or even for mass. What it means is that if it is going to rain, 
then you cannot have mass, you cannot have any Eucharistic celebration. And so these communities need some help to be able to do that. I estimate that for some of the smaller communities, just about a thousand US dollars would be enough for them to get a roof for a building that they themselves can put on, a mud building or from bricks that they can put a roof on. And they will be so excited, also so happy, giving thanks to God and of course praying for uh, the donor or a group of donors. Of course, being from uh, an area of primary evangelization, we're doing a lot about training, about orientation, especially of our leaders and the youth. And we need some support also to give this orientation to them. The youth are very willing to come together to learn things and even to reach out to their fellow youth. Of course, they like to go on a, you know, excursion that will bind them together and all that. So these are some of the areas that we're working on in Ghana. Yes. Well, God bless you, everybody. Um, we'll have another installment soon. And may we have your blessing, Father? Yes. So may God in his goodness shower his blessings upon all those who will see the need to support us. We ask that God will continuously inspire you also in your own way and that you may really find fulfillment in supporting your brothers and sisters in the other part of the world. So may he bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We have a visitor. Hi. Yes. Hi. Thank Bye. you. Yes. Our Lady of Grace and St. John's and St. Joseph and St. James, the greater and lesser, pray for yes. us. <laughs>